I she's didn't big. know it was gonna get that big. That's what they said. <laughs> we should I put love that it. laugh as like an intro to someone. <laughs> I can do that. Warning: This podcast contains violence, sexuality, gore, and other horrible and disturbing things. Listener discretion is advised. Also, the hosts of this venture are ignorant dipshits, so please do not take anything they say as fact. And enjoy the show. Now, are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then we'll begin. The day we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. The atoms in your left hand probably came from a different star than your right hand. It is our basic human right to be fuck up! A second plane now has crashed into the other tower of the World Trade Center. Put chemicals in the water that turned the friggin' frogs gay! The defendant shall be incarcerated for the rest of her natural life with no possibility of parole. You are not machines! You are not cattle! You are men! We were somewhere around Barstow, on the edge of the desert, when the drugs began to take hold. 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 Hello, and welcome to a Cult of Veritatis podcast. I am Oud Gallifrey. Dave Murray! Richard Bigley! Oh, and special guest in the studio. Leon Felger. And also in the studio with us, my co-host today. Uh, Sprout. And, and also Squishy, but sh- she's getting some chicken. Yeah, she's warming up chicken. She'll be here momentarily. She's very busy. Yes. Um. So episode one was basically Serial Killers 101. So it was Sprout's idea to have episode 101 be Cults 101. So we're going to go over the basic mechanics You're and welcome. structure of cults. Yes. But first, we need some poison to drink. So, what's your poison? (laughs) (coughs) So, to introduce this poison, I'm going to read a poem I wrote in like five minutes earlier today. Because that's how I do it. We... We live on ranches and compounds. We live in Bethel near the poverty line. We live in our homes. We follow Manson, Applewhite, Asahara. We follow Koresh, Jesus, Yahweh, and Jehovah. We follow the word of God. The word of God must be spread. There's nothing more important than spreading the word of our Savior. Although it might be futile for the the outside world hates us. No one will love us if we leave. Credit God for our accomplishments, ourselves for the failures. Just pray more, pay more, you shall be saved. But don't forget loyalty is more important than life. Refuse blood transfusions, poison the public, but most importantly, important of all, drink the Kool-Aid. Mm. So, uh, Flavor-Aid. Yeah, in Jonestown, it wasn't actually Kool-Aid. It was Flavor-Aid. Thank you, last um, podcast on the left. So, and I will, I completely agree with that. So I did not bring Kool-Aid. I instead brought, Flavor-Aid isn't available either, no name brand, um, and not, not not a brand without a name. No name brand because we're in Canada. No name brand. The name brand See our is Halloween no name. Costume. We we tagged our 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 podcast with a no name logo. So and then mm-hmm. uh yes and then this is uh this yep. is cherry flavored just like they drank uh not Kool Aid. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've drinking something with flavor crystals in it in, in a while, but it tastes pretty good. Tastes like Jello. Like yeah. Just liquid Jello. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much what it tastes like. Okay, so to rate the no name brand not Kool Aid Flavor Aid? Yeah, it's not Flavor Aid either because it's not available, but it's not Kool Aid. No name. No name. It's no name brand, yes. I will rate it a 9 out of 10 because mm. it was a delight. It is nice. It's, it's like mostly water, you know? Like it was. We, we measured as per the instructions on the, uh, on the container. It said. Uh, what was it? A third cup uh, of the powder to like a liter of water. Yes. So we like measured it precisely. I stirred it with love and care, and uh, now it you uh, put cleanses back, all of your you? beautiful palates, and it's mm. delicious. And 
what else? Nine did? out of ten. Yeah, nine out of ten. I slaved over a hot bowl. Um, <laughs> not like the milk. I my slave. favorite. My favorite 11 out of 10 drink crystal is Good Host Iced Tea. Yes. yes. Sponsor yes. me, please. Yes. yes. <laughs> I will. I'll be. You sponsor me. Sponsor me Good Host Iced Tea. Mm-hmm. Sponsor me Good Host. I will drink you on every episode. Yep. That's what they say. Of my friend's <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Um, I'm into that. But um, so that's an 11 out of 10. This one, I would rate it. Seven on a drink crystal rating scale. So if you want like crystal based drink beverages, you know to consult with uh, Sprout Mm. as uh, she seems to be quite the expert on crystal based drink beverages. I drink a lot of crystal based drink beverages. (laughs) I'm going to rate it. uh, You know, you can buy those lucky bamboos and they're like braided, like three chunks of bamboo are all braided together. They're not actually bamboo. They're actually a dracaena. Sorry, I like plants. And yeah, dumbass. And How did you not know that? And that's my rating. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Is that's three not bamboos braided together? Braided together? Yeah. Mm. So that's beautiful. That seems very accurate because I both love hate that too. Mm-hmm. I like it. I don't know. I I'd rather it. I'd rather have just cherry juice or orange juice or apple juice. So I'm gonna give it a three out of ten. Oh damn, that's harsh. I don't know. So she gives it a six cherry jello shots out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> Cults, of course, is a very broad term. For a lot of scholars of religion, we tend to not use the word cult because, you know, as we joke, cult plus time equals religion. Usually when people think about cults, what they think about is some kind of closed community that is usually dominated by some megalomaniac who controls (laughs) everyone's minds. Here are three important things to understand about a cult. Number one, just because it's a cult doesn't mean it's evil or insidious. Many cults bring people together for good. Number two, there really isn't that much of a difference between a religion and a cult. A lot of the greatest religions, most successful religions in the world began as cults. And number three, cults are as cults do. If it works towards good in the world, then it's fine. If it works towards evil in the world, then it's a problem. Okay, so we're going to talk about cults today. So I'm going to define what a cult is, and I'm going to hand it off to Sprout to talk about something called the bite model. Ooh, so hot. what is a cult is kind of like a gray area subject. Like any definition you can come up with, you can start to include groups that don't aren't really cults into the cult thing. Like uh, there's one that says... Uh, Cultural organizations have a lot of gray area. So a religion that makes demands on your behavior, time, money, um, is when it becomes cult-like. So if they make demands on your behavior, they may want you to act a certain way, they make de- demands on your time, they want you to show up at a certain time. Sounds like my husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh shit! <laughs> he doesn't even listen to my fucking podcast. Yeah. That ass. Or they make you. They make demands on your money, so they want you to pay things. But like, also, my husband. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, other definitions are formal religious groups that practice unorthodox or or spurious worship or great devotions to people or ideas. But when you have that kind of vague description, you come up with stuff like Trekkies, political parties, Elvis fan clubs that are cults by those definitions Mm -hmm. so the one i found that i think explains it the best has three criteria and they want preferably all three or two out of the three to be included as a cult so they want a charismatic leader or leaders so some kind of figure or figures that people seem to worship or give authority to um a process of indoctrination is the second one. So they have some kind of process of bringing people in, usually under false pretenses, and then through indoctrination and mind control, they slowly integrate them into the cult. Also sounds like her husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> the sound effect this episode are going to be... <laughs> <laughs> 
Love you, Mr. Sage Murray. I um, love you too, Mr. Sage. Everyone the th- loves you. The third one, me. which relates directly to the bite model, is economic or other types of exp- exploitation well, or ben, control. Ben, you already show you the bite model. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yikes. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> she snapped at me like a turtle. I did. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. So, so is like the bite model kind of like the dentist system? Like, does it, is it useful or? Yeah. Do you bite a piece of clay and then they x-ray the clay? <laughs> It's just like the dentist system, you know? Okay. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> the, the bite model was uh, coined by Stephen Hassan, uh, and he was, he, in his book, uh, Combating Cult Mind Control in 1988. So one of the things that helped me get out of the moon cult back in 1976 was the work of Robert J. Lifton, who was a military intelligence psychiatrist in the 50s studying Chinese communist brainwashing techniques. And he wrote a landmark book called The Thought Thought Reform and the Psychology of Totalism. And in this book, he outlined eight criteria that any environment may be judged as as a brainwashing or a thought reform. Uh, an environment, and that book was critical, and that model was critical to helping me understand what had happened to me uh, in terms of my recruitment into the Moonies, the three-day workshop, the seven-day workshop, and all the other indoctrination features. And based on his model, I developed the BITE model of mind control. Uh, The B stands for behavior control, then there's information control, thought control, and emotional control. So Stephen Hassan is a former of a cult that has previously been uh, covered here on the podcast, the the Moonies, the oh. Unification Movement. That was one of my first. Episodes. So, mm-hmm. uh, so this book was one of the first books written on cults that um, was written by a former cult member, awesome. which was kind of a new thing. Or more newer, like yeah. it was, and uh, and he had so he has experience in mind control, and b- b- like firsthand from him having it done to him, and also uh, the big thing in the unification church is recruitment. Yeah. So him doing it to others. Right. Um. So the bite model bite stands for behavior behavioral control, information control, thought control, and emotional control. So to like look at groups about uh, behavioral control is like promote dependence and obedience. I mean, most cults will do that. Uh, yeah, and it, they like they might want you to say bow in front of certain people in the cult or they might want you to pray in the middle of the night they make might depend like demands yeah. upon what you do what your actions are and like so and ways that they'll get you to do that is like modify your behavior with mm-hmm. rewards and punishments mm-hmm. so that can be as little as saying like when when something good happens uh, it's because of God mm-hmm. or and then that because that's a little reward you feel good you um, and like a punishment could be like when you do something bad they'll say oh the devil the devil is devil's the bad thing the bad devil's the bad thing yeah. right the devil will do it something and like or the devil's taking over you and the devil guided you to do that yeah or- yeah uh, another one is dictate where and with whom you live. So this was a big thing in the unification movement. Mm-hmm. You were like, you didn't even meet these people. And it's like, you and you are getting married. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And surprise. That, and surprise. We've decided. And then uh, they restrict or control your sexuality. So there's a ton of cults that preach a law of chastity. And then oftentimes their leader does not follow that law of chastity. Like um, the children of God, which I also did, which is gross. Yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the children of God. Sorry yeah. about that. You mean, not even sorry, not sorry, just like sorry. You mean when um, I don't fuck, it, when I fuck, it damages my soul, but when you fuck, it vitalizes you and you need my wife to fuck you? Okay. Like, yeah. yeah. Shit like that. Control clothing and hairstyles. So you see that in like a lot of cults. Um, uh, I was like in, even like in cults that are like 
Jehovah Witnesses where they there's a modification of clothes you wear modest clothes yeah. uh, Mormons they you have your magic underwear yeah. I'd heard of one such Mormon secret and I needed to know more so I headed off to Mormon Heartland Salt Lake City Utah USA but first I caught up with Christian minister and Mormon critic Bob Larson as you probably discovered they have all these secret ceremonies they don't let you inside to see what's going on. I heard they have, um, like, magic underpants or something. Magic underwear, I call it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're sacred, mm -hmm. sacred underwear. And they, don't, they won't talk about that. You try to get them to talk about it, they won't talk about it. Yeah. Um, we don't talk about it much, you know? And so there's, um, it's, 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 I mean, it's simple. Well, I've debated Mormons. I've always just said, let me see your underwear. Excuse me? Let me see your underwear. I want to see your sacred, your silly sacred underwear. You know, there's another side to this, a very superstitious side. For me, they are a feeling of protection. It's kind of like wearing a hug, I guess, is, is how I feel about them. And they have symbols on them. And they believe that these symbols have the power to protect them from evil. And, you know, they will love to tell you stories of soldiers going to war and bullets not penetrating them because of their sacred underwear and stuff like that. The lady was wearing a garment on the airplane and the airplane crashed and her body, her arms and legs all burned. But where the garment was, her body wasn't burned. A true devout Mormon will never, ever take off his underwear. If he takes a bath, he will lay the underwear <clears throat> to the side and keep one arm in the under the underwear while he's taking a bath or a shower. So I was off the hunt for the magic underpants. Like, like, uh, yeah, Hutterites here. Yeah, they all yes, have Hutterites. Like, the... They have the polka dotted, yeah. um, head covering. Yeah. Um, and then uh, regulate what, what, and how much you eat and drink. So oftentimes, um, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, but the seven-day Adventists uh, don't eat meat, mm -hmm. or at least stricter ones don't. Yeah, seventh-day Adventists are, like, all about the ve vegetarian. Yeah, food. yeah, they don't eat meat. Which is cool. Um, <laughs> it's cool. <Yeah. laughs> but good they for are the good for them. Good for them, but, but it's, 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 it's a way of behavior control. Right. It's g cool when you're choosing it for yourself. Yes, but it is 100% like a behavior yeah. modification. Yeah. Um, uh, deprive seven to nine hours of sleep. So this is even found in organization, organizations like the Jehovah Witnesses again, where you go to meetings like three, five, three to seven times a week. And mm. oftentimes you're there late at the late in the in the in the evening and you have young school children you have right. children who are going to kindergarten going to grade one they don't like get my a proper son night. who is at home with his father right now while i'm drunk with you people while your husband is not currently getting a vasectomy but will soon i yes, probably yes. and i'll hold his um, hand okay. somewhere uh the serpent of the forest they... made his balls quiver <laughs> <laughs> um they will exploit you financially. So again, that's kind of like how in Mormonism you are required to pay ten percent of your yearly income or tithing. Else, tithing, yeah. yes, your tithing, or else you are not a worthy member of the church. Mm. Uh, you're a lesser member. What, um, yeah, restrict ten percent of a public sector salary is almost zero. So fucking come at me, Mormons. Right. <laughs> um, restrict leisure yeah. time and activities. Why is your flashlight on? I don't know. I don't know. I just noticed, notified me that it was turned on. I'm turning it off. Okay. <laughs> Sage is trying to blind me. As I like was, reading. apparently. I'm um, sorry. Uh, restrict leisure time and activities. Um, require you to seek permission for major decisions. That's a big thing in the Hutterite uh, communities. Um, you have to ask an, uh, every morning the elders have a coffee. They have their meeting and your husband not you like if you're a woman not you your husband goes and says we need to go to town for a doctor's appointment today and then they say yes or no yep a uh, next one is uh information control so this is has to do with like what you're reading a lot of major uh cults 
uh, say the internet is bad. And there's also, so this is uh, deliberately withhold and distort information, which is information control, uh, mm-hmm. forbid you to speak with ex members and critics. Right. So that's something like the. Um, like the Scientologists. Like with when the, they uh, uh, when they label you a, de- a depressive, or no. Suppressive? Suppressive person. person mm-hmm. yeah. Or when you're a. Um, we talk shit on them enough. I'm sure we're in some Scientology files. Oh, somewhere. yeah. Or, I kind of hope so. Yeah. I I don't think I would be living if I wasn't. That's like a dream of mine to be on like the blacklist of all of these cults. <laughs> it's called it's, in, in Scientology. It's called the Rogues Gallery. The Rogues Ooh. Gallery. Yeah. See, but then I would have had to have been a member. I want to get in like this stuff without being a member of any of these cults. I don't think- I don't think it works like that. But it can. How? Because if you're talking bad about a cult, some cults will apostate. Like Jehovah Witnesses won't just like name people who leave Jehovah Witnesses as apostates. You can be an apostate by just speaking out against Jehovah Witnesses. Okay, I want to launch like a global apostatic campaign for myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jehovah's Witnesses, fuck you and your yeah, mother. Fuck I you. want yeah. to be an apostate. And hey, United Church of Canada, go fuck yourselves. Yeah. Hey, I'm a queer fat witch <laughs> you're a queer fat witch yeah, you're an apostate yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you <laughs> um, okay so it discourages access to non-cult sources or information so it's like oh the world information is devil devil information only the information that comes out of our publishing company is the true word of God that is terrifying mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah and that's how they um, and divide information into into insider and outsider so that's what i was just talking about that's just restating it um generate and use propaganda excessively so like the watchtower has the the watchtower is the publication of the jehovah witnesses however it is not a corporation of the jehovah witnesses it is separate that is how um lots of these uh child sex scandals and stuff have been covered up for so many years oh goody when this new report may be the most detailed and disturbing account to date of the church sex abuse scandal here in the United States, the numbers truly staggering, and all of that just from one state, Pennsylvania. And I'm here, finally, to announce the results of a two-year grand jury investigation As Pennsylvania's Attorney General released this bombshell grand jury report, dozens of people who reported sexual abuse at the hands of priests wiped away tears, saying they finally feel validated. This grand jury report is justice. The report names more than 300 predator priests, including one Harrisburg priest accused of molesting five sisters in one family back in the 1980s. More than a thousand victims in all. Some shared their stories in a video. I was groomed starting young. They targeted me because I was fatherless. He would always have his hands on me. In case after case, the report says, church leaders maintained a circle of silence. Predators in every diocese weaponized the Catholic faith and used it as a tool of their abuse. Just as importantly, the report details the cover-up using the church's own secret records. Priests were raping little boys and girls, and the men of God who were responsible for them not only did nothing, they hid it all for decades. Use information gained in confession sessions against you. So that happens all the time in, yeah. again, like modern stream. Like um, that's uh, the Scientology. That's a big thing, right? Oh, yeah. You don't have confession, but you have auditing sessions. And auditing sessions are... Uh, you you confess all sins that you've ever done, or they don't call them sins either. Look up web look up websites that are called who is Louis Thoreau dot com or who is who is Marty Ratberg dot com. Yes, those are all those are all like the yeah. Scientology. Right, the Scientology when they make their um, who is Leah Remini dot com. Yeah. So here's an example of what you can see. So this is from the Leah Remini Scientology website. Um, sadly, bitterness and anger are common threads through Mrs. Remini's life. 
Mrs. Remini is showing herself to be a spoiled, entitled diva who will still obsessively complain about such petty matters as her seating placement, limo ride, five-star hotel accommodations, and the paparazzi's failure to recognize her nearly a decade ago. Uh, that's just a taste. So, what these Scientology people do is they buy up domain names that will relate to people who are major critics of theirs, and they will do propaganda against them so that anybody that Googles their name will see one of these websites and the Church of Scientology is hoping that they'll be discredited through their character by making up and exaggerating details about them. Um, yeah, and that's just one of the tools that Scientology uses, using the information that's extracted from them um, during auditing sessions. Because auditing sessions are really like prying sessions where you're meant to give up your truth of truths and it can be quite pressing and distressing oh the uh, gas lights to make you doubt your memory so they'll be like oh no 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 that's not how it was that's not how it was before it never was like that that sounds like uh i kind of half grew up in a small you like Ukrainian church town, basically. Everybody oh, shit, was, yeah, Ukrainian church town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Theodore, Saskatchewan. Like, okay. it, it's just a tiny little village of 100 people. Everybody knows each other, and it's, uh, this sounds like some of the shit those people would do. Is oh, like, use your, definitely. The priest they're would, like, indoctrinated in my... Okay, oh, yeah, absolutely. My they're indoctrinated into a cult as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So they also require you to report thoughts, feelings, and activities to superiors. So that's like elders in uh, Jehovah mm-hmm. Witnesses or Mormons mm-hmm. Or, um, or, um, or sorry, LDS, Latter Day Saints, mm-hmm. um, and and Scientology as well, um, and re- reject rational analysis and critical thinking and doubt. Doubt is from the devil. The doubt is the devil doing work on you. It's not actual like. Yeah. It's it's not. It's not you, it's the devil. Right. Yeah, and they preach things like if it starts to make if arguments against the religion start to make sense, it's not because it makes sense, it's because the devil is making it make sense. Um and then the next one is thought control, so it um instill black and white versus us versus them and good versus evil thinking. So that's again like it's from us from the or ev only we are the word of God, everything else is the devil. Yeah. Small town church town. Um and then so change your identity, possibly even your name. And this can be as little as getting new names like you see in. D- d- well, I did an episode on that on that one. Call. I don't remember. What it's I called. can't remember. There's I they can't. They all called each other like their last name was Aquarius. Yes. Stuff the like fuck that. What was that called? As, well, it was I'm one drunk. of the families, wasn't it? It was some sort of a yeah. Yeah, know. whatever. They all changed their name to have the same last name, or it could even be as simple as like in Mormonism or in Jehovah Witnesses, they all call each other brother, this or sister that. Right. Elders. That's yeah. Elders, uh, that's yeah. when you're on your mission. Yeah. Yeah, but um, but you're if you're not on your mission, you're brother this. Right. Um, and your elder and your sister, even if you're on your mis- mission, you don't mm. get like a higher title. Mm. But um, fuck women. Sexist. Yeah. Um, but also on the Mormon on the Mormon missions, that's a big thing. They're just known as Elder. Their last name. You don't have a first name on your mission. Weird. You yeah. It's never once like yeah. You don't have a first name on your mission. Hmm. Yeah. And then so it can be as simple as just calling someone like Brother Ood, Sister Sage. Like that's name changing. That's and a new personality, um, uh, like instilling a new personality. Um, <laughs> funny is that um, the Jehovah Witnesses literally talk about the new personality. They use those words that you get the new personality from the Jehovah Witnesses, right. which is like the superior personality. But they literally use those words. That's um, yucky. So, um, also, like, they use loaded language and cl- cliches to stop complex thinking. So, um, often you see in cults, you see where it's, um, 
where like metaphors are good to explain complex things but when you use a metaphor to explain small things it's belittling you and it makes you think that they are complex things right so that's like that's a kind of ga- gaslighty a little bit. yeah it is gaslighty in a way it's just yeah um they they invite hypnotic or trans states to indoctrinate so um in the cult uh or in the cult in the movie Jesus Camp is that what it's called yep. the kids all start speaking that's a and, fucked up movie right oh, yeah. the kids starts that's such a good documentary because it is such a good like view into a cult because there's little to no biases in mm-hmm. the in the filming like there is a little bit of a bias towards like they wanted to show how fucked up it is but it, it does it on its own they w- let the footage without speak for itself them yeah. doing any kind of input definitely they they let the footage speak for itself um so the kids go into like a hypnotic trans trans state state when they're like um when they start chanting or when they start speaking in tongues. Um, so they use excessive meditation and singing and pray, prayer prayer and well, like, chanting to well, block like all thoughts. Well, speaking in tongues with the holy... Yeah. Like my my, mm-hmm. my yeah. baba called those holy rollers because they would like get on the floor and roll around. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That is like you're putting yourself into a hypnotic state. It's like the state. Pentecostals, a lot of them do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. do that. I, I've been to one of their services when they did that. It was one of the most interesting things I had ever seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. It is time. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for the time has come to ha se ku and ha se bo and amu shiki la basitu and ali mureke ando tu la majide kruti izino lo murevi shiki la pose and no 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 di le baraki lo ho 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 fo te ba she la ha ha izula di ki di moza te borove abaste izele mukrati shua. And uh, were you like, hey, g- get off the ground? Yeah, well, I, I mean, it's certainly not my deal. I've always kind it... of wanted to do that whenever the priest, like mm. I grew up Ukrainian Orthodox. Mm. Um, We're not holy rollers, though. <laughs> that would be frowned upon. <laughs> but yeah, whenever the priest would like hit you with the holy water, I've always wanted to like start rolling around and like screaming <laughs> or something. You you would but. probably be like in trouble. Oh yeah. Oh, I would be in big <laughs> trouble. Yeah, I, I grew up. I grew up at or- Ukrainian Orthodox too. So. Yep. Yep. Emotional yeah. <laughs> control is the next one, and the first one is instill rational, irrational phobias of questioning or leaving the group. Oh, okay, that's yucky. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that is mm-hmm. that. You'll scene. either like be like shot you will be or... shunned. Your yeah. family will no longer talk to you if you leave the Jehovah Witnesses, or you're going to hell, or, or... if if you're considered an apostate. Not everyone who leaves is considered apostate because you can leave in a way that you're not, but that's very, very, very rare. Yes, I had a friend uh, when I lived in Vancouver who got a girl pregnant. Yeah. So he was going to become a dad, and uh, he was Jehovah's Witness, and his parents shunned him because yeah, the yeah, the, that's the partner that, that is got. lean. That is that is a that is definitely even if she was worldly, wasn't she? Well, she was she was black, and he was like very very white. Well, and okay. they were unmarried, but and he got to- actually Jehovah Witnesses are. Um, they're they're now cool with black people. Well, right? no, no, that's Mormonism oh, who's now yeah, cool with yeah, black people. Yes. Jehovah Witnesses has always been about a world preaching. They okay. want they want people in every country. Well, versus like Mormons are more like we like white people because <laughs> yeah. white mm. people because everyone else is descendant of Cain. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yes, yes, yes. But um, Jehovah and, yeah, Witness. Yeah. And, um, and isn't it the belief in all Mormonism is the one that who, uh, black skin is a curse? Yeah, or yeah. red skin yeah. because right, all because the Cain is the, the two people. like Adam and Eve had two sons. Yeah, Cain, um, Abel. Cain and Abel. Abel bred with I don't know how Eve human, probably Eve, Eve 
Yeah. Abel bred with Eve, yeah. and uh, the math on and that, then Kathleen. Cain <laughs> bred with the animals, right. and that's so that's like a dehumanizing thing. <laughs> um, yeah, as one does. Yeah, as one does. That's I mean, I'd, I'd rather b- like I'd probably rather breed with an animal than, than my mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could list like a number of animals I breed with before my mother. <laughs> Hi, Sorry, Leon's mom. Hi, Leon's <laughs> mom. How are you doing? <laughs> Label some some emotions as evil, worldly, sinful, or wrong. So, like, when you feel angry, that's because of the devil. That's yeah. wrong. So that's that's indoctrination. Um, teach emotional stopping techniques to prevent anger and homesickness. So, yeah. Uh, Shutting down emotions as yeah. they rise. If you start to feel like you miss your family, shut that shit down. Kill it inside uh, you. So promote feelings of guilt shame and unworthiness so this is like this is easily done through like you are unworthy of getting baptized if you masturbate and you're a 12 year old boy boy. i was not eligible for sainthood no no um yeah if my hands and dick were made of wood i could have started But another indoctrinating (laughs) um an indoctrinating thing is called love bombing. So that oh yeah, that is how you get people into cult is love bombing. It's by being like, oh, we love you. Only like we we'll love you the most. We'll, you're so amazing. You, you're so amazing. You're, you're so the perfect best. for this group. Like, yeah, Kelly, you're gonna yeah. bring so much to this group. I On an unrelated topic, uh, don't we have the best fans? Everyone, you guys are so good. You we love so you good. all. We're not love bombing you though. You're all yeah. very yeah. wonderful people. <laughs> yeah. And you know, thank you for listening to our podcast. I am so, so glad like I have I'm never really felt so welcomed in a community as I feel welcomed into this And one. if you love us back and send us just $20 a month, Leon will come back to the f- podcast full time. Yeah. That would be fucking cool. <laughs> Patreon. Oh boy. Patreon goal. If we can get to 100 patrons, I will come back to the podcast full time. Okay. And, and get maced. And get maced. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll get a tattoo. And Witches, tasered you know, like and poop my pants. Yeah. And oodle poop his pants. Yeah. I'm not planning on it, but it's going to happen. My promise is the biggest wienery promise out of everyone. So okay. Um, we'll, fi- we'll research the most painful part to get a tattoo and we'll do it there. Yeah. So, so it's your, like, your top three ribs. <laughs> oh, good. So I already have or a tattoo on my top three ribs. Okay, also, um, the side of your foot. Bad. So cult also threaten Sorry, your friends and family. Um, I'll threaten your friends and family. Um, shun you if you disobey or disbelieve. So we're talking about shunning earlier. Um, te- uh, teach and uh, that there is no happiness or peace outside the group. Uh, that's very famous in um, Mormon. Um, in that's very big in Mormonism is that all non-Mormons are um unhappy. Yes, it's only you can only be happy if you are a Mormon. And yeah, if they appear the, happy, it's a lie. All yes. the Mormons I know were really happy. Yeah, mm-hmm. me too. And they were also like really nice people. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Yeah, well, when I was still involved in the cadet program, I had a few cadet like Mormon cadets, and they performed fantastically. I didn't have a complaint about them. No, I I love Mormons. I just have a problem with their like belief and, system. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think you are indoctrinated into a cult. That does not mean I do not like you. Um, uh, Stephen Scott, but it is a cult. Let's yeah. be clear. But it is a cult. Let's be clear. Exactly. Yeah. I, Ooh. you are indoctrinated into a cult. That is not your fault. It is you are being brainwashed. And I want to make that clear. If you are in a cult, if you have been in a cult, I do not hate you. I hate the cults. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not like fascism. Like I hate, I hate each individual fascist and fascism. It's not like that with cults. Yes. I hate the cult, not the cult followers. More like cult victims. Yeah. Yes. So there's a few different types of cults, and no cult fits into any one of these categories perfectly. Like the cults that I looked at, like most of them have two or three of these categories put upon them. So I also have to mention you don't need to meet every single uh, point on the bite model. Those are just suggested points. Yeah. Um, if you even meet it again, in my opinion, even if you meet like two or three of those, it's and if you're an organization, it is a cult. If not, it's abuse. Yeah. Yes. So, destructive cults. So, these are cults that have killed or harmed themselves or others. They've caused a loss of life, 
in their membership or outside of it. An example of this is Jim Jones of the People's Temple, where 918 people died of drinking poison flavor aid in the jungle. Yes. Like our poison, but it wasn't poisoned. Yeah. Well, we don't know yet. Maybe it's slow acting. Maybe. I'm still know. I'm still waiting for those ho- homeopathy pills to kick in. Right. We've been waiting for how long? Like oh. over, over a year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Slow acting. They're just sitting in my gut cooking away. Yep. Um, doomsday cults. So these are groups that predict a future disaster or try to bring about a disaster. So these are like the Order of the Solar Temple who thought Ooh, that... Fine. There was a second coming of Christ, and they were trying to predict when that would happen so that they could plan their glory in the second coming of Christ. Same with the Jehovah Witnesses mm. are in Doomsday Cult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they coming. believe that we are ah. in the... Second coming is the name of my... Excuse me. <laughs> Sex tape. <laughs> um, and the other side of that, so the Order of the Solar Temple will try to predict a future disaster or try and bring about one. The bring about one is example is Um Shinrikyo. Oh, Um Shinrikyo. Oh, oh yes, Um Shinrikyo. I yes. Oh yeah. They they use sarin gas attacks and they're trying to bring about like societal collapse through that. But it was they were a great call. Yeah, it wasn't they quite successful. They were yeah. Actually, uh, the twelve because Japan has the death penalty and just like within the last year have the 12 death penalties that have needed to be or who that have been assigned from that uh from that cult mm-hmm. um because they're mass murderers um what what just took place um because they have a law that anyone in a trial that is could be called to be witness uh, can't be put to death until everything in that trial is is closed, okay. so that they still have all the witnesses. So mm. as not, not until recently has everyone um, like has things gone further. I'm not sure if they've been killed yet or not, but yeah. they have the they have the death penalty in Japan. Yeah. Um, another one is political cult. So that's taking the cult-like mindset and manipulation control into a political that? environment. What, what was that docu that we just watched? The documentary. The family. Oh yeah, yeah. Which, I'm sure that we both just watched. Which that. family? Yeah. It's all about like the White House and how mm-hmm. people are trying oh, to make the new presidents. That. It's it's um, on Netflix. It's oh, fucking so great. there's there's a whole bunch of I haven't watched any of it yet, but I think I'm going to have to watch that. I did not know that existed. Um, thank you for telling me. Um. I've been seeing a lot of people uh, post uh, post videos about is Donald Trump a cult leader um, recently on on uh, atheist talk about cults YouTube, mm-hmm. um, which is where I spend like most of my time. Right. Um, and the uh, I've seen a lot of a few videos go up recently, and I just. I haven't looked at them because I just haven't had the emotional energy to. But, but once I do, I've just been focused more on Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons who are in fact cults. Well, when when you look at how his base sticks to him and how they're Come unwilling to abandon him or question him, it becomes very cult like. He kind of seems like a charismatic leader in that light, and he performs the same like gaslighting and and manipulation tactics that a lot of cult leaders do, kind of on a wider scale. Because he doesn't have fun he fact. Tries yeah. to gaslight. The whole world. Mm. Yes. Well, I had a Jehovah's Witness named Joel while I was on mat leave. Like I was, I took two, two, two years off to spend time with my kid and he would come all the time and he introduced me to his wife and he, I told him like, I was like, no, I'm in like, I'm an atheist. I'm like super cool with talking to you about this, but you're not going to convert me. So I had like a pet. Jehovah's Witness, and his name was Joel. Mm. I actually, and I met his wife. Recently, was going to sign up to get a uh, to get a Book of Mormon. I have a Book of Mormon. Well, okay. Do you want to borrow it? I think it's not good. I kind of want to get it brought to my house because one of the options is having it brought to your house yes. by an elder. Um, I'm just gonna wait until my house is presentable to have someone inside of it, mm-hmm. and then I will invite them to my over to my house, and I'll make tea, mm-hmm. and we can talk about the Book of Mormon. That oh sounds fantastic. Okay, I I have a Book of Mormon that I cowardly got just like mailed to my house. 
Wait, what? like how a coward. did you do that? So I don't remember. They didn't. They didn't say that that was an option. I don't know. But also, I want them to come to my house, and I keep on going into the arts tunnel at the university to see if the Jehovah Witnesses are there. Because when the <laughs> when I was at university, the Jehovah Witnesses were there like every single week. Yes. But the last two weeks that I've gone, the Jehovah Witnesses have not been there, and I don't know why they're not there, and I'm very sad. You gotta find a Joel who wants who wants to introduce you to his life. Dum, dum, dum. I don't think you <laughs> took in a breath like throughout that whole thing. <laughs> so some examples of political cults are the Iron Guard in Romania, which was a fascist political cult in the 1920s. Oops. Uh, they rose to a power of controlling the entire country in 1940. So they became powerful enough and they had enough adherence that they actually gained control of a company, a, a cult. Also, the SS and the Nazi Party, they were yeah. very cult-like with indoctrination methods and with the same like demands on time, control, money, behavior that are exhibited in a lot of other cults. Another type is a polygamous cult. Now, they teach um, and force, keyword force, marriage between two or more people. Um, sometimes it's the leader of the cult marrying many, many people, or sometimes it's leaders in the cult, elders in the cult, taking on many, many wives. So, like, fundamentalist Mormonism mm. or or original Mormonism mm -hmm. and uh, something like the Waco disaster, mm -hmm. the cult from the Waco disaster. I can't remember their name. The right Branch now. Davidians. The yep. Branch Davidians, which were a branch from the Avidians who were a branch from the Seventh-day Adventists who were a branch from... I'm not going to keep on going And back. the Branch Did Davidians were led by David Koresh. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were. Yes, and uh, he was mentioned in my poem. Yeah. He was. There's actually, there's been multiple cult owners who have changed their name to Koresh. Or cult, did I say owners? <laughs> cult. Well, <laughs> they are. That's You're not Basically, wrong. they're running a really corrupt business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, multiple, but he was mentioned in my um in my poem, my my bad poem. Okay, I liked your poem, so fuck you. I wrote it in like five. Minutes. I liked it. It was delightful. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, and there's also also I, also I love you like a general. So. There, yeah. There's also okay. there's also big <laughs> there's also bigoted cults where their focus is eliminating a certain group or dis discluding a certain group from their spaces, um either through persuasion or violence right. an example of this is the kkk they were an early racist cult that wanted to drive out black people and jewish people from the country in this automobile reserve lieutenant colonel lemuel penn was killed by a shotgun blast while riding through colbert georgia arrested for this crime were four knights of the ku klux klan two klansmen were tried and acquitted in a few short months, five murders, 13 alleged members of the Ku Klux Klan said to be involved in the killings. When such an order as this moves in and takes over the police power, you are completely at their mercy. And their atrocities and their violence can be visited on anybody that disagrees with them in any given situation. What started as a joke a hundred years ago, when a group of men donned bedsheets for a romp, has over the years attracted to it persons charged with acts of harassment, intimidation, and violence throughout the South. Even though the nation has been outraged for many years, the Ku Klux Klan persists with its bizarre ritual and trappings. But a hundred years is a long time for a joke. Now, those are the basic types of cults, and... As you've gone through this, you've seen the extreme thing cults have been able to make people do. So the last thing I'll cover is the tools that cults use to get this kind of manipulation. Sprout kind of went over it, like the different ways they get people to do things and like exactly what is behavior control. But these are the tactics the cults use to press those buttons. So the first one is thought reform. So they use manipulative techniques used to make someone do what they otherwise wouldn't do. Thought so re thought reform reformed is that the the bite model is yeah. is a really good model of how thought reformed is done. Oh yes. yeah, and it's often it's often very much like conditioning. So if you think the right thing and repeat the right thing, you get rewarded. If you don't, you get punished, and it goes on and on. And eventually thinking the wrong thing just contemplating on it has a bad association in your mind and you stop thinking of it mm -hmm. uh the second one is deception 
Um, very few cults, I guess, show their whole hand when you join. Often they tell half-truths or just bait blatant lies to new recruit members and it isn't until you're more dependent and more indoctrinated do you learn the true nature of those cults kind goal, of like scientology. Goal scientology yeah goes <laughs> into the o- ono ross and carry episodes on scientology mm-hmm. they literally infiltrate scientology and then get kicked out of sign mm-hmm. after scientology it's yeah. awesome and also when you're when you're being given or fed these new truths, when you're getting trickled the information about these cults, um, they use different tactics to make you accept them more. They use, like, sleep deprivation, yeah. starvation, they use drugs, they use abuse to make you accept these new truths all the stronger. Yeah. There was a cult called The Family that was in Australia. There's been many cults called The Family, um, where the leader, she uh, made all of the all children. All the kids all, the, all look the same. Like, blo- children, like children. You yeah. did did you cover well, this d- as well? I did a female cult leaders episode. Right. And she's, and like, she's like in my... She, right, yes. In I, the works. I was like, yeah. yeah, she's a... She made all the children look like her, and she also drugged children with LSD. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. Mm. So much LSD. There was lots of LSD. There was a ton of LSD in that cult. Yeah. Those uh, poor babies. Oh, my gosh. And as babies. And, like, the youngest one didn't... Speak Beak for like nine years after she got severely mm-hmm. beaten when she was like three. Oh wow! Yeah, very uh, yucky. Another tool that they use is isolation, and they use two different types. Uh, they use isolation to isolate people from the outside world, from their friends and family who aren't in the cults. So they limit their ability to communicate with them, and they also use isolation as a form of punishment. If you do something that the cult leader isn't happy with, then you get separated from many members of the cult. Maybe you get shunned for a while. You don't get spoken to for a while. So getting in line and towing the party line becomes like the way you get to interact with other people or else you get isolated. Right, like tantamount to your literal survival like yeah. as a part of the group. Yep. Um, another one is induced dependency. So this is how they get cult members to demand absolute devotion, loyalty, and submission to the cult. Um, Their sense of self is slowly destroyed. Uh, Sprouts talked about how many cults have, like, standard haircuts, outfits, like, ways of looking. And that's all about wiping away the individuality. Mm -hmm. So taking, you know, a rough stone ball and polishing it until it's uniform with the rest. They Mm -hmm. scrape away all your bumps all your quirks, all your talents, until you just fit everybody else. Yeah. Like, and they do the same thing with, like, if, if you don't tow the party line, if you're different, if you stand out, you know, the, the nail that sticks out gets the hammer. Yeah. And that's how they treat that, until you become like everybody else in the cult. Because they don't like individu- individuality or uniqueness. They like people who follow what the cult leader is saying. Individuality is the name of my sex tape. Yeah. Um... The last I one. I love that- it. I would watch the shit out of that. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, th- <laughs> the last tactic that cults use, or like the last one I'll talk about, is dread, existential right. dread. So a lot of these cults are religiously based, where they believe they might have an afterlife or salvation or a reward in the end, and they use that to make people think: if you leave the cult, your soul is damned forever. Mm-hmm. Somebody that I got to see speak that, um speaks to this is nathan phelps oh yeah i we we saw him yeah at um mm-hmm. yeah. shift to reason mm-hmm. uh, yeah we, we saw him at the at the, like the, the conference, conference in, yeah in saskatchewan yeah, yeah. what what um, um he he left reason, kate yeah. nate nate phelps mm-hmm. is the son of fred phelps mm-hmm. the who was like oh. the crazy like f- westboro God baptist, baptist church, Westboro baptist yeah. church. Right, yes she, um sage and i went to an atheist conference called shift to reason and nate phelps was one of the keynote speakers yes that and it was amazing it was That's awesome awesome i'm like ugh. when nathan was a young man he wanted to leave the westboro baptist church for a long time but what kept him there was fearing that his soul was damned as he left he says okay i know i'm being abused i know what these people are saying are wrong but I've been convinced that if I leave, I'm going to spend eternity in hell. Yeah. And even as he walked out, he still believed that. 
Can you imagine how traumatizing and well, terrible? and oh, yeah. lots of Jesus people Christ. who are shunned, like lots of people who end up being dif- disfellowshipped from the Jehovah Witnesses. While they leave, they still believe in the true doctrine. They're just mm. they just did a big sin that cannot be for a big sin. I'm using air quotes that cannot be forgiven, and therefore they will not go to heaven. Yeah, like get fucked. Well, they actually won't go to heaven anyways. So I don't know what they're all talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, and no, they won't because there's only the true, the, the like, chosen yeah. three, three thousand and, and something, yeah, three hundred, th- no, three thousand and something. So, but you will go to paradise on earth. Yeah, and just to give you like examples of some of the punishments people use, like David Miscavige in Scientology has been well known for using physical punishment against yes. people who disobeyed him. Um, there's been. There hasn't been audio released, but there has been a person who escaped Scientology that... Several people who did, have escaped did, Scientology. ...did a recreation of what he what he remembers from the retraining camp and kind of did a reenactment in Louis Thoreau's new documentary about what one of David Scavage's abusive freaks outs were it's like. It's on Netflix, David and Miscavige. Yeah. Um, Cutting all ties to the outside cult. Uh, with all, sorry, cutting ties with everybody outside the cult. Uh, somebody we covered in this podcast was R. Kelly. Yeah. The women he indoctrinated in were not allowed to text or contact family, and when they were, they strangely sounded like R. Kelly typing. Yeah. That would be a, a, that would be very much a polygamous cult yeah. or a sex cult. Go listen yeah. to my R. Kelly episode, which came I out have. before. All yeah. the other R. Kelly. Yeah, we got the out. scoop. We got the scoop on. Yeah, we got the scoop on R. Kelly. We got the scoop on something else. How too. deep fakes? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. That might be the one. Yeah. Um. And definitely R. Kelly. Though. Last example is Nexium, which is a new one that we have to cover. Yes, we um, have to cover that one. Uh, that, that that one's been up for a while. Failure to fall in line on Nexium included getting bitten, being branded, or being starved, or being dehydrated. Well, like, they would be branded yeah. to join the cult. They had it right like down. Oh yeah. Down here. And Wait, a, what is this? An additional messy, addition, additional messy brands if rules weren't followed. Right. On Nexium, it, Nexium. It's, it's a cult that uh, insert actress Keith name Rainier. here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what's her face? Yeah, I forget. She was on a Smallville. No, there was there was a uh, Kristen. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Yeah. If future Ood put it in. Yes. Future Ood put it in. Most people had never heard of Nexium until this happened. Allison Mack. She has been charged with sex trafficking. The FBI arrested the group's leader, as well as Allison Mack. And over several months, a number of charges were laid, including sex trafficking, forced labor, and racketeering conspiracy. And all hell broke loose. Mack was with the alleged cult leader when he was arrested in Mexico. Nexium has been called a terrifying cult, a sex cult, a pyramid scheme, and even a group bent on world domination. Nice. Alrighty, so for Occulte Veritatis, I've been Ood Gallifrey. Sage Murray. Richard Bigley. And special guest in the studio with us. Leon Felger. And guest in the studio. Squishy. And Sprout, who was a co-host. Oh yeah, thank you very much for being a co-host and Sprout. Have a wonderful <laughs> night, everybody else. Love you, bye. Chance well, bye. Yeah. Bye. So for the next foreseeable future, I thought I'd try something different for the palate cleansers of the episode, the songs that we use to play out our episodes. You know, we're in the 20s again, the 1920s, and I thought, why don't we take a look back 100 years in history every week and see what songs are topping on the charts exactly 100 years ago. So, one of the songs topping the charts... Beginning of January 1920 was The Broadway Blues by Nora Bays. See you in the after show.
Alrighty, let's answer some questions from the Discord. Uh, if you remember the Patreon, we are recording a full version of Q&A soon with some of the hosts, but for now, on the after show, I'll answer a few of the questions submitted by people from the Patreon Discord. First one, boxers or briefs? Definitely briefs. I need the support. I don't know, I, I like the graphic designs of a lot of boxers, but comfy briefs are always nice. How spicy is too spicy? I like it to hurt a little bit. Now, I'm very white, so a little bit is probably on the mild scale for most people. Like, mild salsa is just spicy enough for me, so apparently barely spicy at all is just spicy enough for me. Best non-sexual body part. Um, I think I like noses. Noses come in all shapes and sizes, and sometimes they wiggle with certain emotions and all that. Noses are weird organs, weird parts of the body, and smell is kind of a weird ethereal sense, like you're sucking in samples of the air of whatever's around you. Like if you're smelling somebody, you're smelling particles that came from them, entering your nose and embedding themselves in your navel cavities to smell that. And it, I don't know, it, it almost seems like touch without touch. A little weirded out by that. Uh, last one, favorite online media serial could be YouTube, series, podcast, whatever. Um, I think my favorite, because it's always a celebration when it comes out. And I always bring it to the top of my list to consume first is Hardcore History. Throughout my... I guess podcast listening history, Hardcore History has seemed to be there. And when a new episode drops Hardcore History, that's when uh, it's a little celebration time. Because, I don't know, it's just so well done. And, you know, I would listen to him describe, like, the Eastern Front of the War for all day. And with some of his series that are literally like 12, 14, 16 hours long, you can listen to him all day. So it's great. Um, yeah, so those are the questions that I'm a that I'm answering this time. Uh, yeah, so if you want a more complete Q and A, uh, sign up for as little as dollar a month on the Patreon, www.patreon.com/ovpod, and a new Q and A will be up there very quickly as soon as we're able to record it. So 
I'm Wood Gallifrey from Occulte Veritatis. Keep your stick on the ice. Yeah, let's bring that one back. For those red-green fans. Anyways, have a wonderful evening, and see you in the next episode.